Entah jari bu. Uh, Your Excellency, the President of the Republic of Kenya uh, and the Deputy President, uh, all protocols observed. Hamjambo. Assalamu alaikum. As a Muslim, I am informed and inspired by the teachings of the Holy Quran, which underpins the importance of living together in peace uh, and the sanctity of life and the protection of human life. Respect for all human beings, regardless of their gender, race, and religion. The Holy Quran says, O mankind, we have created you male and female and have made you nations and tribes that you may know one another. And the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, All mankind is from Adam and Eve, Adam and Hawa. An Arab has no superiority over a non-Arab, nor a non-Arab has any superiority over an Arab. Also, a white has no superiority over black, nor has any superiority over white, except by piety and good action. And when things go wrong, it preaches the absolute need to look into your inner self and have the courage to forgive your enemy. And the Quran says, let them pardon and overlook. Would you not like that Allah is merciful and forgiving? And I, we stand, I stand here today, our minds are still fresh with a great tragedy the world has witnessed uh, relating to our country in terms of extremism and extremism attack against innocent people. My heart goes out to all the families who have lost their loved ones to these actions of violent extremism. These are difficult times for Kenya. It is perhaps an opportune moment to ask, where do we go from here? And what kind of nation do we want? And how do you and I and all of us together can contribute to that Kenya we desire? What kind of legacy do we want to leave behind? A united and a prosperous nation or a divided people and a broken country? For the victims and their families, you can be filled with ill will, anger, and the desire for retribution. We can head towards that dark route as a country, sharply divided along ethnic and religious lines, one community pitted against another community, Muslim versus Christians, feeling hostility towards one another. Or we can make an effort to grasp and apprehend and to replace the violence that is ravaging our land with an effort to understand compassion and love. I have been down that dark route myself. I was a victim of violence extremism. I was seriously injured in a bomb blast, but I was lucky, I survived. But seven innocent people, including two children, perished in that horrific attack. It was a traumatizing experience of pain and anguish and suffering. I had the same feeling that many victims and families and their friends have. I was full of rage, bitterness, and the burning desire for revenge. But I must say, after much reflection and meditation, I found the power to forgive and move on. It was only then I became human again, and I got the power to heal and recover. And by the grace of God, I found my peace. I have been blessed. All my life, I have lived among Christians. I was taught the alphabet and educated by Christians. And as I lied injured in hospital, Christians like my fellow Muslims came in their hundreds to pray for my recovery. And the predominantly Christians of Kamukunji constituency honored me by electing me to parliament. <laughs> At no time have I and my community who, have, who live among majority Christians feel discriminated by our neighbors or stopped or denied our right to build mosques, to teach our children the Holy Quran, to fully practice our religion and to pray to Allah. We live and continue to live in peace and harmony. I cannot imagine my life and that of my community without Christian neighbors. 
That's why we have to make an effort in Kenya. We need to understand and go beyond these rather hard times. We are facing a deadly enemy who is not only killing our people, but also threatening to destroy the very foundation on which our young nation is built. It is an enemy who wants to divide us among ethnic and religious lines, Christians against Muslims, Muslims against Christians. It's an enemy who wants to turn neighbor on neighbor. This is an enemy who is bent on the destruction and the dissolution of the Kenya we know and cherish. We must not allow that to happen. We must... We must be united against the fight against violence extremism, but we must not allow violent extremists to set the agenda for us and to determine our future. We must not allow violent extremists to turn one Kenyan against another Kenyan. We are bound by geography and history. Now is the time to recognize that which unites us is greater than that which divides us. We don't want divisions in Kenya. We don't want hatred in Kenya. We don't want violence in disorder. What we want is love, wisdom, and compassion for one another, and feeling of hope and justice to all those who still suffer within our country, whether they be Christians or whether they be Muslims. I know that we can do it, and I know we can go to higher heights. We can do better, and we need to stand together and walk together into the future. Kenya is rising. As we rise and shine, let's make sure we leave no one behind. We must rise as one indivisible nation. So I ask you this morning to pray for understanding and compassion. I bring you the message of peace. Please say a prayer for peace in our country and our people. Thank you so much.